Africa is a huge continent with varied challenges from certain to certain, from country to country. Um, but I would like to start by saying that the major challenge now would be the lack of data. Lack of data on refractive error and refractive services. So it makes um, planning and implementation and even assessment of implementations very difficult. Another challenge will be the varied human resources providing uh, refractive error services. We have some that have been trained for a few weeks to those who have been trained for six years. And so the skills in, in some parts, the skills are almost not there. And then you have the super skilled ones. Um, even th those who are now trained as uh, optometrists, for instance, in some countries where you have adequate number of optometrists, there is the issue of maldistribution. So you have very well trained personnel, but they are all crowded in the city areas. And why is this so? Because it is private sector driven. And of course, because it is private sector driven, these optometries set up their own clinics so that they can make money. Uh, and um, it, we end up having a vertical program, more or less. So refractive error hasn't really been embedded in the comprehensive uh, eye care system as it should be. In some countries where, uh, for instance, in Nigeria and in Ghana, where a little bit of refractive error is going on in the public hospitals, we still do not have the provision of spectacles. So these are some of the challenges um, that you, we have in refractive errors here in Africa. That leads me on to the next part, which is you've raised the point of human resources. What has been the progress that has been made in terms of human resource development in Africa? One of the key developments, I would say, is the, uh, the existence now of training schools in Africa. So training schools are available now for the French speaking. They're also available for English speaking. So there are the four-year BSc programs in uh, Malawi. And there's another one in Uganda that's coming up. And Eritrea actually has uh, started uh, as, you know, graduating students. So this is a very important development. And we also have um, a school in Mozambique uh, for the Portuguese speaking. So this has opened up um, uh, access to all Africans who intend to, to study optometry. So this is actually a good development, yeah, optometry. It's, it's great to see the development that's being made in terms of human resource training. In your experience and, and in the Nigerian setting then, what would you say is the acceptance of spectacles? How are they received in the community? They are not well received in the communities. Now, in the cities and amongst uh, those who are educated, yes, spectacles are accepted. But quite a large number of people still reject spectacles as um, a management or a, treat a means of treatment. Um, there's quite a lot that needs to be done. There's quite a lot of investment that needs to be done to change these beliefs, their cultural beliefs. Sometimes it's the cost, sometimes it's peer pressure, sometimes it could be as a result of you know, not feeling the need to have spectacles uh, on. And we also find that, that uh, some have actually developed coping skills. So even with large uncollected refractive errors, they are able to carry on life, you know, at least to some extent and they think that that is fine. So we still have a lot to do. I would say no. Yeah, spectacles are not accepted to a large degree. And thank you for summarizing such a huge and vast topic of um, uncorrected refractive errors. The points that you've raised, the challenges, the barriers, they cannot just be seen in Africa, we see them globally. So if there were three key messages that you would say are necessary in terms of prioritizing refractive error services at a more local district level, what would you say those are? Nigeria is ready to deploy optometrists at the primary eye care level. So if I have three take home messages, I would mention one, that qualified, skilled personnel should be at all the levels of care, including the primary eye care level. 
Now the second would be to invest in health education and promotion, targeting the barriers that have stood against the uptake of spectacles. And then the third would be to recognize that the government and everyone needs to recognize that refractive error is a disability that can be treated and therefore should be part of the national insurance scheme. Thank you, Anne, for summarizing that for us. It's been very informative and it's helped to raise some key points that are needed in terms of overcoming uh, the correction of refractive errors. It's my pleasure.